Recently I had read in headlines headlines about the author of Harry Potter's series of books and that reminded me of the fact that I never really addressed this fundamentally important issues with all of you but I do believe that at least all Christians of all walks do understand that witchcraft and things promoted by those books are completely wrong and contrary to the Bible. However, the popularity of those books among the young generation and the fact that the older generation condones those, the younger generation enjoying those books really makes me wonder whether really people, whether nominal Christians, do understand what they're getting into. I'm reading now a letter from David J. Mayer, who obviously felt the need to tell us about Harry Potter and what does God have to say. So I'm writing, I'm reading his very important message to all of us, and then I'll make my own comments as well. Here is what David Mayer says. I'm writing this urgent message because I was once a witch. I lived by the stars as an astrologer and numerologist, casting horoscopes and spells. I lived in the mysterious and shadowy realm of the occult. By means of spells and magic, I was able to invoke the powers of the controlling unknown and fly upon the night's winds, transcending the astral plane. Halloween was my favorite time of the year and I was intrigued and absorbed in the realm of Wiccan witchcraft. All of this was happening in the decade of the 1960s when witchcraft was just starting to come out of the broom closet. It was during that decade of the 1960s, in the year 1966, that a woman named J.K. Rowling was born. This is the woman who, sa who has captivated the world in this year of 2000 with four books known as the Harry Potter series. So he wrote this letter, obviously, back in 2000. Continuing, he says, These books are orientational and instructional manuals of witchcraft woven into the format of entertainment. These four books by J.K. Rowling teach witchcraft. I know this because I was once very much a part of that world. Witchcraft was very different in the 1960s. There were a lot of fewer witches and the craft was far more secretive. At the end of that spiritually troubled decade, I was miraculously saved by the power of Jesus Christ and his saving blood. I was also delivered from every evil spirit that lived in me and was set free. However, as I began to attend fundamental Christian churches, I realized that even there, witchcraft had left its mark. Pagan holidays and Sabbaths were celebrated as Christian holidays. And he put his Christian holidays under quotation mark. Now, I'm reading few more passages, well, there are a few more passages in his important letter, so let us pay attention to what he says. He is a former witch, a former astrologer, a former numerologist, he is a former uh, occult practitioner. So he says, as time went on, I watched the so-called Christian, under quotation mark, Christian churches, compromising and unifying. I also watched with amazement as teachings from Eastern religions and a New Age doctrine began to captivate congregations. It was a satanic setup, and I saw it coming. Illuministic conspirators were bringing forth a one-world religion with a cleverly concealed element of occultism interwoven in its teachings. In order to succeed in bringing witchcraft to the world... And thus complete satanic control, an entire generation would have to be induced and taught to think like witches, talk like witches, dress like witches, and act like witches. The occult songs of the early 60s launched the Luciferian project of capturing the minds of an entire generation. In the song Sound of Silence by Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel, we were told of seeds that were left while an entire generation was sleeping and that the vision that was Planted in my brain still remains. Now it is the year 2000. That's where he. That's when he wrote that letter. Now remember, we're, we are now in 2022. So we're, two we're just two decades away, two decades beyond 2000, beyond the time when this letter was written. So David Mayer says, now is the year 2000. All of the foundations for occultism and witchcraft are in place. The Illuminists have to move quickly because time is running out. As a former witch. I can speak with authority when I say that I have examined the works of Rowling and that the Harry Potter books are training manuals for the occult. Untold millions of young people are being taught to think, speak, dress and act like witches by filling their heads with the contents of these books. Children are obsessed with the Harry Potter books that they have 
left television and video games to read these witchcraft manuals. The first book of the series, entitled Harry, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, finds the orphan Harry Potter embarking into a new realm when he is taken to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. At this occult school, Harry Potter learns how to obtain and use witchcraft equipment. Harry also learns a new vocabulary, including words such as Azkaban, Sirke, Draco, Erised, Hermes, and Slytherin, all of which are names of real devils or demons. These are not characters of fiction. How serious is this? By reading these materials, many millions of young people are learning how to work with demon spirits. They're getting to know them by name. Vast numbers of children professing to be Christians are also filling their hearts and minds while willingly ignorant parents look the other way. This is the oldest con game ever hashed out of hell. As a real witch, I learned about the two sides of the force. Apparently so do many so-called Christian leaders. When real witches have sabbats and esbats and meet as a coven, they greet each other by saying blessed be, and when they part they say the force be with you. Both sides of this force are Satan. It is not a good side of the force that overcomes the bad side of the force, but rather it's the blood of Jesus Christ that destroys both supposed sides of the satanic force. High level witches believe that there are seven satanic princes and that the seventh, which is assigned to Christians, has no name. In cover meetings, he is called the Nameless One. In the Harry Potter books, there is a character called Voldemort. Vol Voldem Voldemort. Sorry, Voldemort. You see, I don't follow these. I don't follow those writings, so you know I'm not familiar with their names. So it's Voldemort. So in the Harry book, in the Harry Potter books, there is a character called Voldemort, and the pronunciation guide says of this being, he who must not be named. And then now he describes when uh, the bookstores were stormed on July 8th, 2000, and, and, and people kind of uh, flocked those bookstores to buy Harry Potter books. And now he concludes, David J. Mayer concludes, What does God have to say about such books as the Harry Potter series? In the Bible, in the book of Acts, we read the following in the 19th chapter, verses 18 to 20. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. As parents, David J. Mayer concludes, we will answer to God if we allow our children to read witchcraft books. The word of God will prevail mightily in your life only if such things of Satan are destroyed. This tract has been prayed over and I hope it has helped you. Oh, indeed, it, it, it did, did help me very greatly because when I faced with some problems that uh, some of our uh, church members had, uh, problems of satanic nature when they had demons haunting them, I did give them instruction to look around their houses and see if there are any occult objects that might have remained from their previous lifestyle or that might have just, you know, might have just been lost somewhere in the house. In all the cases, indeed, it was established that there was some kind of, some kind of occult thing. In one case, a lady wanted to return it to her, what is, to one of some of her relatives who gave her some kind of requisite from Harry Potter book, but she completely forgot about it. In another case, there was a CD, Harry, uh, Harry Potter CD, which a lady, when she was delivering in her home, she found and she thought, oh no, this might be a reason why my son was experiencing depressions and all kinds of things. In uh, and so on. In another in another case, it was a ring that was uh, that was kept by uh, by a former spouse of that member whose children, whose two sons, were having having some demonic apparitions and and, and troubles in the home. Besides that, they also confessed they they use that 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 they both once used Ouija board to play and of course that obviously invoked and invited demons so if you have harry potter books if you have anything of occult nature as far as i'm concerned that certainly does invite, invite demons to be around you and to mess with you so i would certainly advise you to do what you have seen in the bible that those books all those books were burned burn them burn all those requisites and objects because you know if you want to have peace of mind and not be bothered by demons burn them and of course Always continue to praise God of Israel and Jesus Christ because demons hate when they are praised. Now, 
those are my experiences. I've got some other experiences that are not directly related to Harry Potter books, but uh, I've just shared with you what I think is relevant. And I, in a sense, I feel kind of sorry that I didn't recognize this urgent need to perhaps speak about this earlier. Now, you know, Harry Potter books are presented to the children and adults as a fictional, harmless fun. But in the year 2001, Jeremiah Films Production published an educational program entitled Harry Potter Witchcraft Repackaged. And it is now available for free on YouTube. In that program, various experts on, in occultism speak about the content and the gist of Harry Potter series, as well as about the consequences for its audience. Now, what drew or what draw my attention was the word witchcraft, you know. Uh, to someone, Harry Potter books might appear as harmless fun, yet they're actually a fruit of occultism, which not many of us might recognize at first glance. And therefore, reading occult books such as Harry Potter is harmful and dangerous for our spiritual well-being and our ultimate salvation. You see, modern witchcraft advocates, they make contacts with the spirits uh, of the nature, which are, in fact, you know, demon spirits. And I believe that we are familiar with the biblical injunction again uh, against uh, witchcraft and worship of and worship of nature. Nature is, dear friends, created by God. Nature is created by God, and we are to worship the Creator, not the created. And interestingly enough, many of these ecological movements, you know, they they actually involve worship of the Mother Earth and the worship of all kinds of things and all kinds of New Age and occult things. Sadly, you know, that the, the many of them are just uh, clothed in, in, in those kinds of doctrines, which is completely wrong. Yes, I, we are to keep the earth. Yes, we are to be ecologists. Yes, we are to preserve what God has created, but not by worshipping the creation. We are to worship the creator. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 17, uh, we are, well, and in Deuteronomy 17, I think, we have a general condemnation of worship of the creation of God, things such as heavenly bodies. Deuteronomy 4, verse 15. Take careful heed to yourselves, for you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at Horeb, out of the midst of the fire. Verse 19. And take heed, lest you lift your eyes to heaven, and when you see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the hosts of heaven, you feel driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord your God has given to all the peoples under the whole heaven as a heritage. But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace, out of Egypt, to be his people in inheritance as you are this day. So this instruction against worshipping created things, nature included, was given to the ancient Israel in order to preserve that nation from breaking the first commandment which says that we are to have no foreign gods in our midst. If any of us would have a Harry Potter book in our midst, it automatically would have entailed breaking of the first commandment. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You see, such witchcraft was practiced in the ancient Egypt, the, 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 the nation that Israelites were rescued from. Today, numerous people have created God out of nature. There is a movement out there devoted to worshipping, as I said, the Mother Earth. You know, in the very realm of witchcraft, there is a goddess present as, as well. Now, Harry Potter books are far from harmless fantasies. An expert in world religions and researcher for occult, author Car Carol Matriciana, points out what is involved in the writings of Harry Potter. In her statement recorded in the uh, video program that I mentioned, Matriciana says that lie about Harry Potter books lies in the claim that it is a harmless children fantasy. So breaking of another law of God is involved in that work. What is that lie? Well, the lie is that it is a fantasy. Witchcraft is not a fantasy, it is reality, says Matriciana. She also pointed out that J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series, has done an extensive research of occult and is very accurate in her writing. If she is not, the witches all over the world would object about her books not being accurate representation of their religion. So the conclusion is very logical and clear, friends. Harry Potter books are a true representation of witchcraft, the black art, and black magic. Now, Joanna Rowling majored in mythology. You know, she has borrowed from pagan religions, Celtic religion, Druidic rites, witchcraft, Satanism, a lot of the spells and incantations. So even though Harry Potter appears to be fictional, 
There are many religious teachings in those books that people are not aware of. There are symbols in those books that the readers may not recognize because they are not familiar with paganism and occultism. That is what is dangerous about those books for your children and for yourselves. You see, our children might read them and unknowingly absorb paganism and satanic teachings into their beings as well as the spirits associated with those. The same goes with any adult who reads Harry Potter for fun, not really realizing that he or she is actually what he or she is actually reading. The very name of the main character is deeply steeped in paganism. Any expert on the occult, any witch, any and any pagan knows what the word Potter means. Thus we as followers, the followers of Christ, we can no longer be ignorant. We need to be informed about this phenomenon of Harry Potter. So listen to this explanation, brethren, lest we be deceived. Potter is the Sumero-Babylonian goddess Aruru, the great potter who created human beings out of clay. She is image of a god and infused the first humans, sorry, the first human with the breath of life which brought him to life. Aruru was also Ishtar, Inanna, Mami, Mama or Mami too. Assyrians said she was mother wombs for females. So potter is the female goddess, the goddess of Babylon, who is considered the potter of created human beings from clay. And all pagans and all witches believe that the patriarchal god of Christianity, the god of Israel, copied that in a very poor imitation because he cannot give birth. So what we have is the feminine-oriented cult of witchcraft, which is the woman and her process of birth fundamental in a new life, in transformation, in changing of the inner man to higher consciousness, which is all that Harry Potter is all about. In fact, the first book in that series is entitled The Sorcerer's Stone. You know, inner man is to be changed to become a new creature. And this is a total reversal of biblical teachings, brethren. We are transformed when we become aware of our relationship with Christ and when we take on the mind of our Savior. Well, this much information should be enough to alarm you, to alarm all of us to the danger of, the, of Harry Potter books. If we know the Bible revelation about sorcery and witchcraft, the very title of the first book in that occult series should ring the bell and disturb us deeply. Why? Well, what is sorcery? Webster's Dictionary says it is, quote, the use of power gained from the assistance or control of evil spirits, especially for divining, divination of black magic, necromancy, witchcraft. So is that what a true Christian should be reading? Is that what our children should be entertaining their minds with? And the same dictionary tells us what witchcraft is. It is an act, an act or instance of employing sorcery, especially with malevolent intent, a magical rite or technique. The exercise of supernatural powers, alleged intercourse with the devil or familiar spirits. End of the quote. So as children and adults read Harry Potter, the witchcraft, enveloped into fantasies and fantasy stories, they are inadvertently actually having intercourse with the devil and familiar spirits. That is exactly what Satan wants, and that is exactly why he inspired Joanna Rowling to write such books. Brethren, the Word of God, the Bible, frankly and firmly condemns these things in total, you know. Condemns these things. In Deuteronomy, we do have, we have already read a condemnation and we have a condemnation of all cases and instances of magic sorcery witchcraft and occultism in other words we have a total and inclusive condemnation of harry potter books thus if we truly live by the bible we will never get ourselves involved into reading and entertaining ourselves with that repugnant paganism deuteronomy 18 verse 9 when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead." For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God for these nations which you 
will dispose, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. This is Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9 through 14. So this blanket condemnation of all occult practices was given to the ancient Israel. Now, interestingly enough, right after these instructions, Moses and Israel were promised to have a prophet like Moses. In verse 15, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear. Brethren, friends, that prophet indeed came in the human flesh. It was Jesus Christ who died for our sins, rose from the dead, and left us the example to follow. He left us four gospel accounts of his life and his beliefs. But just like the ancient Israel rebelled against their God and got involved in gruesome occult practices, the modern house of Israel is doing exactly the same. Israel today rushes, I mean the house of Israel today rushes to read occult Harry Potter books and children in Britain and America want to imitate casting spells and other which things they learn from Harry Potter books. The modern house of Israel does not want to read the Gospels nor to follow the example of the prophet whom the Lord rose up in their midst. They do not want to hear what that prophet, their savior, teaches them. They want to follow the example of a sorcerer, Harry Potter, whose name is derived from the Babylonian goddess Ishtar, after whom the most gruesome pagan sun-worshipping festival is named in English, Easter. Now, the Israel of old, brethren, never wanted to hear Moses, the prophet of God, and the law of God which God prescribed prescribed through him. Israel always wanted to be like the surrounding nations and to practice all the abominable magic, witchcraft and sorcery of those nations, all those satanic things that caused those nations to be evicted from the promised land. And so the house of Israel eventually rebelled against God of Israel and submerged itself into those abominations. We read about, about that occult apostasy of the house of Israel in Second Kings chapter 17. Second Kings 17 verse 16. So they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, made for themselves a molded image and two calves, made a wooden image and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. And they caused their sons and daughters to pass through the fire, practice witchcraft and soothsaying, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry at Israel and removed them from his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah alone. This is the section from Second Kings 17, verses 16 through 18. Now the ten tribes of Israel, dear friends, were removed from their land due to their apostasy into occultism, serving the sun god Baal and his consort Ishtar. And their descendants, who have lost their identity, have been doing the same even today. They Christianized their Baalism and have their so-called Christian services on Sundays. They proclaimed Easter, described in Ezekiel 8 as the greatest abomination, the greatest Christian holiday. The ancient Israel wanted to be called God's people, yet to do what they pleased. Well, the modern house of Israel views itself as great Christian nations, particularly those in the Anglo-Saxon world. They view themselves as great Christian nations, but they are just some as they're just sun worshippers of Baal and Ishtar, just exactly the same as their forefathers. Now Judah remained in the promised land after Israel was expelled, yet the house of Judah also fell away from the truth into occultism, paganism and witchcraft. The house of Judah apostatized into the religion of Harry Potter of that time. You see, Potter is the Babylonian goddess Ishtar. The Babylonians enslaved the house of Judah because of its apostasy and what caused the house of Judah to be enslaved and exiled from its land well is described in 2 Kings chapter 21 when we read about the most wicked of all the Jewish and Israelite kings, King Manasseh, 2 Kings 21 verse 3. For he rebuilt the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. He raised up altars for Baal and made a wooden image as Ahab, king of Israel, had done. And he worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. He also built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem I'll put my name. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he made his son pass through the fire, practicing soothsaying, used witchcraft, and consulted spiritists and mediums. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. He even set a carved image of Asherah that he has made in the house of which the Lord has said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I'll put my name forever. And I will not make the feet of Israel wander anymore, 
from the land which I gave their fathers, only if they are careful to do according to all that I have commanded them, and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. But they paid no attention, and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. You see, they paid no attention to all the prophets that God was sending them, to all the judges God was sending them so that they would repent and change their ways. So they paid no attention and they were seduced, you see, to do even more evil than the nations whom God destroyed in order to settle them into the promised land. And what is going on today, dear friends? Well, the modern house of Judah and the modern house of Israel pay no attention to Moses, neither to the prophets whom the Lord sent. They don't follow the greatest prophet of all times and the greatest Jew of all times, Jesus Christ. They follow Harry Potter, who is supposedly a fiction, yet he propagates a real religion. And real religion is witchcraft. And like the king Manasseh, they're being seduced to do more and more evil, for which the anger of God will be indeed stirred up. I read to you the warning letter from David J. Mayer, uh, in which he, as a former witch, indeed, he indeed warned us about the danger of Harry Potter books. He mentioned in that, uh, if you remember what I read, he mentioned in his letter that he watched the so-called Christian churches compromising and unifying, and he watched with amazement as teachings from Eastern religions and New Age doctrine began to captivate congregations, you see, to seduce them to do more and more evil. It was a satanic setup, and I, w I saw it coming, he said, back in 2000. Well, do you remember... What is Gnosticism? I have given, uh, I've given some teachings about Gnosticism on this channel, so you can find them out. You can find them out there and listen to them. And hopefully you'll be coming to realize now why I felt even now urged to deliver, uh, warning as, as of this kind. You see, friends, much of the New Age philosophy is actually Gnosticism repackaged. We have to be aware of that if we are truly Christ followers. And, uh, certainly, you know, that was not my last Words on the subject, we have to tackle in this age the new age philosophy that has crept in, it seems, everywhere from modern psychology to modern entertainment. And now we have the occultism as well. It was the year 2000 when David Mayer wrote us, wrote us that book. And, uh, you know, now it's 2022. We can just imagine how things must have gone, must have gone much worse. Much worse. So, the Bible specifically mentions that witchcraft carried the death penalty in the ancient Israel. If Joanna Rowling was there at that time, she would have been stoned to death for writing witchcraft manuals. Exodus 22 verse 18 Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. In New King James it says sorcerer, not witch. In the Serbian translation of the Bible, as in Old King James, it says witch. And Leviticus 20 verse 27 adds the following a man or a woman who is a medium or who has familiar spirits shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. Now, of course, we are under the new covenant and under the new covenant there is no ministration of death. Jesus Christ is the one who will execute the judgment on those who will not repent of their witchcraft. Is there any among you listening to this who read and keep in your home the books of Harry Potter if there is, undoubtedly you're risking your personal spiritual security and your eternal spiritual life. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 and 20, we have a warning that, you know, there is that there are the works of the flesh. Galatians 5, 19, and now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, or as Moffat translation says, magic, or Old King James says, witchcraft, so idolatry, sorcery, magic or witchcraft, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So dabbling one's mind into Harry Potter books and entertaining oneself with witchcraft and occult can at least invoke demons to come and possess one's mind and home, and at worst can cost one eternal life provided the reader of those abominable teachings 
has been truly converted and has tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age, of the coming age. So, everyone who just does not heed these warnings will indeed, indeed will have to answer to God. Is there a copy of Harry Potter book in your home? Is there a whole series in your home? Is there any occult object or writing in your home? If there is, as an elder in God's church, I can only quote the advice from the Bible. Burn it. We read all of the next. Burn it, destroy it. If a book, burn it. If an object, grab a hammer and destroy it. Remove that curse from your house and pray to God in the name of Jesus Christ to expel the demons you have attracted by having such things in your surroundings. You know, destroying the occult books and objects is the only way for the word of God to mightily grow and prevail in our midst. Otherwise, our salvation is at stake, brethren. You may not inherit the kingdom of God. And those who do not inherit the kingdom of God because they prefer occultism will finish their self-righteous lives in the lake of fire. You know, one may deceive his own heart that he is a Christian while being involved with demons by studying the witchcraft manual called Harry Potter series. But God cannot be lied to. Playing with Harry Potter witchcraft and sorcery is the breaking of the very first commandment of God. And such transgressors will not be in New Jerusalem. I'm reading uh, for the conclusion, Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers, and sexually immoral, and murderers, and idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie.